the bodice and the back bodice and front bodice I did pretty much the traditional way. The skirt I'm going to do is not really the traditional way, but I find that it's easier to balance when I'm finished with it, so we're doing it non-traditional. All right, I'm, I've got a piece that's big enough for both the front and the back at the same time. And when I'm draping the skirt, I think of the front and the back as one, as one, so that they're balanced properly. And I'm putting the pins in so that I can tug on them. I've got my center front lined up. I'm going to turn it around and line up the center back. So it does the same thing. And while I'm at that, I have to look at the side. And you're going to be able to see that better than I can because the camera's in the way. I also need to raise this up a little bit. So it doesn't pump. And I'll readjust the camera again. Okay, so I want this to be level as it goes around. And if it's not level, it won't work. When, when you hem a skirt, you stand still and cut the hem off at the bottom. At least that's how they did it in the old days. And that's convenient, but it's not really as accurate as if you start out with your hem at the bottom hanging nice and smoothly. Still have to raise that a little bit more. So if you start out with the hem hanging smoothly, then if you've got a straight skirt, it will always hang straight. And if it needs to be adjusted a little bit in the hem, then that's okay. But when you're draping a basic pattern, you need to start out with it level and kind of tube shaped as it goes around. So I want it to be hanging nice and level and smooth and tube shaped or pipe shaped. Now we'll see if we need to adjust the camera. Yes, we do. So now that I've got it level, I'm going to focus more on the waistline area. So it's already level, I've got a nice horizontal line, and I'm going to bring my fingers together, I'm just running them around kind of the widest point. And this doesn't look too bad. I've got just about the right amount of ease, but I'm going to put one pin right here and take out a little bit of it. And when you get into the advanced level of pattern making, you'll talk a lot more about ease. But for simple patterns to begin with, I prefer to add ease depending on what I'm making out of the pattern. So there will be more of, well, that actually would be about right for this size. So I'm making sure that I'm lining this up on the side seam where I can feel it and it's still level. And I'm going to put one pin going in both ways because I don't really want it to move either direction. There. Okay. So the reason I'm doing the skirt all at once is that I need a dart in back or two, a dart on the side seam, and a dart or two in the front. And if I drape it as one piece, then I can get this side seam balanced to begin with. And typically, fixing the side seam, I always found to be tedious and annoying. So my response to that is to just make the pattern with it balanced to begin with. So now I have the same amount of dart on both sides as I'm draping it. And that's, that's just my test dart. It might be more, it might be less. 
it doesn't look bad. I can put a little dart right there, but I want this front dart to be bigger. So I'm going to let some of that out and see what kind of dart I want right here. And I could put it all in one dart, or I can figure out kind of the amount that I need to cover where your tummy would be. And it's not a lot on her. If I give her too much, then she's going to have a bulge there that we don't want. But that looks like a good place to start, and I've kind of lined it up with this dart. So that's going to limit my side seam to what I can have with this line right on top of the side. So my side seam is smaller. This one, this one I kind of play with a little bit. So I took some of this dart out and put it over here. It still looks like it, it could be a little too much. But if I were to pin this down the side, that would, that would fit fine. It would be a nice curve and it lines up with the top one. And I can turn this into one dart. Or I can kind of take that extra fullness and divide it in half as I go up and push part of it over here and the rest of it over there so it's kind of divided. And that would make a pretty back skirt dart. So I'm going to turn this one into two because your book has two. I could go either way with it. It depends on what I'm going to do with it. If I were making a princess line out of it, I would definitely go with one so that it's easier to combine with the bodice. But we'll be doing one of those. So I want to make sure that this is still hanging straight and level. And it is. And in your book, I think she's not quite standing up straight. In your book, they have both darts on the same level at the widest point, and the front darts higher, and then the side seam would be a little bit lower. One of my favorite French pattern makers, instead of having the front ones level high and the back ones level low, she'll take the furthest back one and mark where the widest point is, and so that would be the level of this dart. And then she would mark the level of the widest point in front. And she doesn't really have much of a tummy. In fact, I would be tempted to move some of that dart out. But if you're draping a pattern and you're draping ease into it, that's where you would put your ease. So I can leave that there. You would also put some there in back. And I've got a little bit in back, too. Anyway, I'm finding the level of where her tummy would be. And it seems to be about right here. So when I watch her work, she will wrap a string that goes from the bottom of this dart up to the bottom of that dart. And everything as it goes by is going to fall on the line between the two. So I would change that a little bit. So the darts don't end at the same level. They're graduated as they go around for a nice visual look. But that, that just depends on your preference. The book teaches you to do them level. So you do what you prefer. And if you end up using my pattern, you can just change it to what you prefer. Just lengthen the dart a little bit longer. So I've made my dart widths and my side seam. My dart's going to be straight, two straight triangles. So I've marked enough on those. But on my side seam, I need this to be curved. So I'm going to put in a few more pins to define the shape of that curve, and then by the time it gets down to here, it will be blended in. 
but the important part of what I'm doing on the side seam right here is that I'm keeping this line facing outward so that I have the same amount of dart on the one side as I have on the other. So when I stick the pin in, I go all the way through, I go down a little bit, and then I come back out the other way. Students often have a difficult time with pinning. And if I decided I didn't want some of this, if I feel like that dart is too big, and anytime you have a bubble right there, then your dart would be too big. So I could call this finished. I would just need to mark the corresponding line that's on my bodice front and back onto the skirt and then they would automatically just sew together and match very nicely. And it's looking a little crooked but I think that happened when I lifted up the dress form. That's a little better. Sometimes they don't sit level in the stand. If I decided I didn't want that ease there and I wanted to put it in, you know, maybe I'm making a really tight pegged skirt and I don't want to bump there, then I can take this out and get rid of some of that dart and push it back over to the side seam. Then I won't have ease there. Usually ease is the appropriate choice. but that would reduce the amount of ease and that's actually not so much that it couldn't just be eased into the waistband right there but I could go a little further with it and push it over into my side seam so my side seam would end up to be just a little bit the dart would be a little bit bigger on the side seam okay so I will just mark the waistline level and that kind of transitions as it comes around to the back so I'm going to need to look as I'm marking and that's something that you'll just have to work at and make sure you get in the right place. And when I take those pins out, it's going to hang better. So I'm going to leave mine graduated because that's the way I like it. But depending on what teacher you have, you're going to want to do it the way that whoever is grading you want you to do it and after you finish school you can use your own aesthetic. Okay, the tinier the pin bite I get right there the better that's going to look and while it's kind of stretched out I'm finger pressing it a little bit. And then I'll take one of those out. So you're seeing me struggle with the pin a little bit but that's just part of the process. The more smoothly you can get the pin in, the better it's going to hang. And you can probably see that now. And when I draw this in as a curve, when this is sewn, that's going to hang a lot nicer. So I want to make sure all of my markings are there. This is going to be a right angle. These two are going to create a right angle together. This one needs to be a right angle, another right angle. And I've got my dot to dot and it's all matching. And you'll see when I balance it, I can take these two and combine them into one. But for our purposes, I'm going to leave that one too. All right, so that's a complete skirt and bodice pattern. They all come together nicely. 
and they make a complete sloper. I kind of think of it as a complete puzzle. They all have to go together and match as a unit in order to work properly. So by the time I get down to here, I need to have nothing, and I'll fix that with my curve in the next video.